The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Hello, my name is Patty Hunter and welcome to my show, Patty's Page. Today, my special guest is, all the way from Holland, his name is William McBain. He was also the co-writer of the show, the song that opens up my show called Lighthouse. Anyways, we're going to have him as my guest on Skype, of course. So we'll be with you in a moment. So I'll introduce you to him any other second right now. Thank you. Well, hello there. This is Patty Hunter of Patty's Page. And uh, right now I'm speaking to William. What's your last name? William McVeigh. William McVeigh. That's my artist. That's your artist name. I wasn't quite sure, because I know your real name. <laughs> um, when were you born? I was born on the last day of June in 1962, right here in my hometown. And my hometown is a little place in the south of the Netherlands, and it's called Newstadt. Newstadt. Frankly, if you would translate it, it would say Newtown. Newtown. Oh. Newtown. Newstadt. If you would translate it to uh, well, English. How how old is this town? Uh, and we are living in the smallest part uh, here. When I look outside my window, I'm going to throw a stone. I would be fired, probably throw it into Germany. And oh. on the other side, I would throw it in Belgium. Oh my goodness, you're not that far off, eh? No, it's a very small part. Do you, uh, have you gone to Germany a lot, or? Yes, most of most, uh, the time we go to Germany, uh, basically just, just doing some shopping. Uh -huh. And also we go to Belgium to do some shopping. It's normal here because it's so close together. How many languages do you know? Uh, probably the two that I have most under control is the English language and the German language. Oh, I... So the, the Belgian is, is uh, probably most the same as we talk. Uh -huh. I, Dutch. So, um... When you first became interested in music, how old were you then? I think it must have been around the age of seven, I was, I think, oh. seven or eight. I probably saw the Beatles or something on telly, uh, on television, and they were, they were uh, waving their guitars around, and I loved the sound of the songs. I don't know for sure if it were the Beatles or something, but I was quite sure then, at that age, seven or eight, yeah. that, is what, that is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to be uh, a guitar player, a musician. I wanted to be a musician. Who had, ins uh, who had inspired you to become a musician? Who inspired me? There were a lot of people who inspired me. Oh, yeah? It, yeah, to become a musician. Later on, uh, the family on my mother's side, uh, like my uncles, they were very musical, and every time when we had birthday, birthday parties back in those days, there was always somebody playing a trumpet or something, or, or uh, knocking on the table with some sticks, they were, and singing songs. They were, they were a bit of funny people, <laughs> and very musical. Well, what your uh, uh, type of uh, instruments were you taught? Did you self? Teach yourself, or did someone? Yes, else? I'm. I'm uh, yes, I thought. I thought myself. Uh, oh no, 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 that's not true. We had. I had a neighbor a long time ago, and he was a very friendly man. Or he was. He still is. He still is a very friendly man. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he saw me uh, fooling around with all with a guitar, and and I couldn't play at that time. I was. I think I was 11 years old or something. 
Oh. And I got a guitar I got it as a present from a nephew from me, uh, which played for a few years in a rock and roll band, and he's much older than me, and he gave me the, he gave me the guitar as a present. And I was very happy because that was the first time that I did hold the guitar in my hand. Mm. And there were three strings on it. I didn't have an idea that there had to be six on it or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then my neighbor introduced me into the world of music. And he started me to learn these, these beautiful songs. And first, first of all, I had to, to learn the chords. Which back in those days were simply three chords. It was G, D, C, and that was it. Yeah. Because the other ones, I, I didn't, couldn't control mm. my fingers. And later on, of course, I learned a lot about music, but that was much later. And from there on, I think I was 11 years here. Yeah, that's when my, my really music journey starts. It starts there, right mm. there. What other instruments over the years have you uh, learned? Oh, from my 11 on, it went on with the guitar. Yeah. Uh, but Three years later, I discovered, uh, I was 15 or 16, I discovered that there not only were guitars in the band, but there was also a <laughs> bass guitar. Oh. And uh, I was working then, I, I had my first job, so I was earning money, so and, and I bought a bass guitar, a very simple one, and there were only four strings on it, and I didn't have a clue what to do with it. So I, I teach myself to play a little bit bass. After that, I started playing bass guitar and dance. And what was your and first? Around that time, I started also play. And now we're talking mid mid eighties, and that oh, was wow. around the time that I also was starting to play keyboards, piano. Well, I, I never learned to play really the piano. I mean that it really the music really uh, streams on your ears. I can play chords on the piano, and that's basically it that I can do. So. Um your first band, how old were you when you first joined your uh, musical? Oh, how old was I when I joined my first Many band? Many moons ago. <laughs> that was a long time ago. I think I was 15 or 16 years. Oh. Uh, it was probably, it was, it was a band, but I cannot say that we were making music. We were making a lot of noise. <laughs> so did you... Know, we were making a lot of noise, and it was not, uh, not everybody was happy back in those days. Oh. So it didn't get off the ground, it's sort of kind of... No, it didn't get off the ground, I think. How many I bands have you been with since? Oh, well, let's count them on our fingers. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I can, I can tell you that. What's your favorite band, then, that you have? I can tell you the ones which I was successful with. Yeah. You don't forget that. Most of the time you forget the bad things. But the, the successes you always keep in mind. The first band that was really great was back in the 80s was Tusk, T-U-S-K, I think you spell that, but that was named after an album, uh, an album from Fleetwood Mac, Oh, a song, a song from Fleetwood Mac or something, and we played uh, covers back in those days, mm. all songs that were standing in the charge at the, uh, charts at that moment, and that was great, it was, good. It was a great time, and we uh, rehearsed a lot to play as accurate as possible as that the songs uh, sound on the radio. Do you read notes? No, no. No? Uh, no, that's a funny thing. I never learned notes. I started playing guitar. After that, I started learning how a song is built up, how a song right. evolves, Constructed, how yeah. songs apart. See. If you wow. split it in parts, you see there's a verse, there's a chorus, there's a bridge, that's what I mean. Yeah. And after that, I started to learn writing my own songs. Oh, you do your own lyrics? No, no. No. Not my lyrics, I'm just basically talking about music. Oh, instrumental. Yeah, instrumental. Uh, uh, lyrics was always a problem for me, because I can't write. So all of your songs you have composed, right? Yeah, all the songs I have composed. Most of the time, there were always people around me who would write great lyrics. Oh, yeah. Collaboration is good. Yes, collaboration is very important. What genre is your basic music? I mean, is it all different or, dif or the same? Or? Uh, I don't know. Basically, I'm a rock man. I love rock music, like Sticks, like Boston. I like 
six too. Yeah, they're very great. I met them a couple of times. Yes, I know, I know, I know. I love Tommy Shaw. I love his work. Yeah, he's... Oh, he does. But I basically, I'm a rock man. I love rock music, but there are also some other things that are now having my attention, musically-wise. But you sing as well? Yes, I sing, yes. Are you the lead the singer? In China album, I sing the opening track, Dark Moon. Lady of the Moon. Lady of the Moon? So are you a lead singer or vocals in the background? Oh, uh, both? That's a difficult question because some people back in the 80s they were crazy about my voice because I <coughs> sing very high. All right. I got uh, a bit of, of uh, Tommy Shaw like voice, some oh. people say, but I'm not so good as him. <laughs> oh, you're doing okay. I heard you say. Some people just like my voice and some people don't like my voice. I do. I like it. Uh, thank you very much. So, um, you have your own uh, recording uh, studio then? Yes, 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 yes. Back in the 80s, I played in a lot of bands. And at the end of the 80s, uh, I think it was 89, around that time, I was sick of all the bands, all the arguments, all the discussions uh, about money or discussions about music yeah. and I was fed up with it. Yeah. Uh, I was in a relationship with what, which uh, was also not working, this, she disappeared on the horizon and I was alone. Uh. I quit with all the bands and probably I think a time later, it's, it's, it's 88, sorry, the time was 88, not 88. Eighty-nine. I met Teresa. Oh, ah, yeah. And Teresa and I, we 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 have a click together. You know what I mean? We, yeah. we were, we're very close. How long? How long have you been married then? Uh, we were uh, six, twenty-three years. Married. Every, every twenty-five for us, Bob and I. Ah, cool. Beat you by two tw years. Twenty-three years married and twenty-seven years. Almost All together? Yes. Three? It's 27 years for... 24 like, years married. Sorry, I was married in 15 May 1992. I was married 1991. Okay. It's alright. <laughs> What's your uh, studio called? Your radio? Yeah, yeah. I'm at the radio. Uh, back in those... Uh, it's my studio is called The One Studio. But I will tell you how I got there. Because okay. now it's, it's something that's way out of control. <laughs> <laughs> In a funny way, back in those days, what I was talking about, I was fed up with all these bands. I was alone in the world, and uh, I met Teresa, and Teresa and I, we got together, and she said to me, why don't you start? I talked to her often about that, that I wanted to do my own thing, you know, make my own studio, write my own songs, do something with it, and she said, why don't you do that? Why don't you go? Uh, I was working, I, I've been uh, working all my life, I had a daytime job back then, and she said, when you work overtime, it's maybe nice if you take that money and spend it in, 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 in stuff here. And that's what I did. And it started out with a four deck, a set deck, and I think probably now it's uh, one of the most professional home studios that you can find in one room. How many uh, gadgets do you have in there? How many gadgets? <coughs> I will tell you, uh, I got five computers in there. Mm -hmm. One is basically used as a door to this digital audio workstation. I mean, you record your music on that one. Another one is uh, <coughs> used for a kind of guitar pro program called Line 6, mm -hmm. which is very use, huge. Uh, another one is a master computer, which I master the music. It's, it's kind of system where you make it ready to put it on a CD or other stuff. Uh, there's a lot of technical stuff in there. Do you I burn mean, your own CDs, DVDs? You mean if I can make them? Or yeah. What, what do you mean? You know, burn me I can make there, yes. Yeah. I can make music in there. And mm -hmm. I want to see that. I really Does Stanley Strobe work with you all the time? or? Mm. We had a, a period in our life where we were very close working together, but 
But he is now with his family in a band called CBS. So CBS oh. stands for Create by Family. Yeah. Uh, I visit them a few times when they were playing here around in the venues. And they're very great. They're very good. I've heard him sing. He's very good. Very good guitarist as well, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. And he sang uh, several of my songs, which is cool. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for helping him with my uh, songs as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who else works with you in the studio? Uh, right now, uh, my studio is only available for the Gig and Shine project. Ah. That means Hank Brill and Rob Hodger, who both, uh, which both I formed the band Gig and Shine. You can not call it a band, it's more a, a studio project. Oh yeah, so how long have you guys been together singing you now, Henry? Uh, how long? We've been together now, I think, three years. In yeah. 2013 we started. Well, you're decent, man. You're decent. Love, it's, love the music. Love the music. Yeah, thank you. It's good to thank see. You. you know something? I want to know how many CDs or DVDs have uh, you worked on over the years? Oh, that is a good question. I'm, I don't know. I really you? don't know. Okay, what's your fave? Well, absolutely my favorite is, is uh, the song Heimlich on the Dark Moon of Paradise album. Is that the 16 minute one? No, the 16 one is called The Clock, and that oh, is my clock. second favorite. Oh yeah, The so, Clock, oh wow. Yes, because uh, for both uh, songs, I hold everything open in my studio. I don't know how to say that in, in English. I, 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 I went to the top of the Mount Everest and back. <laughs> <laughs> ah. To oh. make it as beautiful as possible and make it as exciting as, as possible. It was. I mean, you're going to entertain people for 17 minutes. You cannot. Uh, yeah. Well, it was stay. decent. I loved yeah, it. You, you cannot stay in the same rhythm for 17 minutes. No, you, you have to have different, uh, different yeah. uh, build up and. Difference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, have you re just released anything? Any CD or. Uh, this is a CD that we released now, yes. When was that released? Gig and Shine, Dark Moon Over, Moon Over Paradise. Yeah. It was released on 29, uh, 29 December. Oh, December? Yeah. So, uh, in English, uh, it, what does it mean? How do you pronounce it again? That, uh, Gig and Shine. Gig and Shine. Gig and Shine. It's a German yeah. word. Yeah. Counter light. Counter light. Oh, that's different. Would you like to explain to my audience what that means? Counter light is basically the light that comes up on stars and bounces back on the earth, something like that. Is it? I'm not so technical in, in that kind of, of thing. Uh, what's the main theme of the song, the CD that you had done? Is it basically what? The main theme? You mean the meaning of it or yeah. you mean the theme, a song? The, well, going through the whole CD, what, uh... Oh, you mean what we want to say with it? Yeah. Uh, basically, you can you can see it on, on the title. I mean, Dark Moon Over Paradise is basically about everything that is happening right now in our world. Even if it's uh, involved with financial world or religion world, uh, whatever, there are a lot of things going on in our world. Yes, yes and it is. We are afraid that there will be a dark moon over paradise. That's mm. basically what we want to say with all the lyrics. But not all songs are connected to that. The most song that is connected to the title of the album is the German song called Alarmstufe Rot. And Alarmstufe Rot is basically, uh, if you were translated, it says red alert. Ah. Uh, Red Alert. And in that song, uh, the song is uh, very political, basically. I mean, we say very directly here to the world, especially yeah. to politi politicians, it's Red Alert. You mean that's uh, attention, attention. 
Yeah, attention, yes. Attention, mm. red alert, alarm should for good. Be, be aware uh, what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're doing with people. Be aware to the world. What um, in your future for your uh, music and all that, what uh, plans do you have for the future? Uh, for the future... How long are you going to be a musician, you know? Uh, yeah, right now we are working on the next album of Heat and Shine, which, which will be a bit different as the first one. It will be much more uh, kind of laid-back music. Uh, I don't know how to explain that. Laid -back I understand. Music. More much easier music. More mellow. On here. More mellow. Oh. The word is mellow. Mellow, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mellow. Yeah, mellow. Finally, yeah. would you like to uh, have a wee chat with my audience to uh, to help encourage them to seek what they want to do and with with much uh, what how to succeed in their chosen profession? Yeah. 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 How do you want me to do that? How, well, how did you succeed? What did you do? What was your... Uh... I, I often made statements as William McFain because I'm, 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 I, there, there are a few things that, that you have to be doing with your life. Basically, most people think it's all about money. Forget the money. Forget all that. that, that, that. And I'm, I'm not allowed to use dirty words. But Whoa. forget money. <laughs> I heard you. Forget money. <laughs> yeah, crap. It's not about money. Yeah, when yeah. you die, we all going to die one day. Yeah. When you die, there's only one thing that's very important. That's what? what you leave behind in memories. Not in things. I don't like it when people say, oh, he left the house for half a million or a million, or he left the oh. car. And I don't give a damn about the car. Sorry for my language. It's what you leave behind. The legacy. Your legacy, yes. And that is probably the most important thing. So when you go stroll on through life, like we are doing now, be careful what you do with your legacy. And always try to help somebody. That's right. Don't uh, put people down. Don't put people down. Just try to help somebody. So try to help somebody. If you want to, it doesn't matter if you believe in religion or not, or do you believe in God or something or not, whatever. Uh, I, I was wrong. Uh, I was growing up Catholic, you call that Catholic? See, yeah. yeah. I'm not going much to a church anymore, but that doesn't make a difference to me because I believe in things. I believe in them. And the most best slogan I ever did read was Think Global, Act Local. You betcha. Yeah. Very wise. I cannot have people on the other side of the world because it's it's not possible for me. But if my neighbor, even if I would, even if I would, I want to help people, it doesn't matter where, but maybe it's sometimes better to help your neighbor when he has a problem or something. Are we? we? And that is the, the, the phrase, think global, act local. You betcha. Well, sir, I mean not sir, I very... Ah, William, William, I, I have so much respect for you, though. Uh, thank, thank you so much for coming on to my show. Yeah. And um, I, I hope that you and Andre Brill, yeah, yeah, come over here to the United States and do yes, yes, some I music. Yes, yes, I planning that. He wants to do some uh, something astronomy, I don't know, uh, yeah. I just forgot it. We are, basically we are making plans to come in 2017 to the United States. Good. So, we will contact you, uh, we'll keep in touch, you might say, and yeah. we'll keep it going. Okay. Peace be with you. Thank, yeah. Thank you, and give all my regards to all you people over there.
61 is the number. Speed my love. 